appreciate it. These guys come out every week and, and cover the Falcons. Uh, I want to wrap up Indiana first. You know, when, you, when you play a good team and you don't play well, uh, sometimes the game can get out of hand. And uh, you know, bottom line is Indiana played a lot better than us. And to me, it's kind of like the Tulsa game in reverse. I, I'm, I don't think we were 27 points better than Tulsa, but that was a game that we made our field goals, they missed them. They fumbled the ball, they were over. You know, or whatever in the red zone, we were perfect. Um, you know, they faked the punt, we tackled them. They fumbled on a uh, on a punt return, we recovered it. So those five or six plays that can change a game. In the Tulsa game, we made it, they didn't. But Indiana was the opposite. You know, we missed two field goals. We had a roughing into the kicker, and I, I thought that was a critical play because at that point it was seven seven. We stopped them. They were punting out of their own end zone. We could have had the ball in great field position. And then they took the ball and drived it all the way down, and we, we stopped them again. But uh, you know, I, I think there's a lot of things in that game that could have happened early that if we had taken advantage of opportunities, the game could have been different. But the bottom line is we didn't make those plays. So you know, we ran the kicker. We were 0-3 in the red zone. Uh, defensively, we were awful on third down. We've been a good third down defense. But I mean, we, they converted, I think, a third and 18, a third and 17, a third and 11. Uh, I think they conv converted eight of, uh, of 13 third downs. So we were poor in third down, and in protection at times, we, we got beat. And we had, you know, you go back on film, and seven opportunities to make big plays in the passing game. And we dropped the ball, we uh, threw it too far to the inside, uh, we got beat in protection. And it wasn't a schematic issue. It was just a player of the, theirs beat a player of ours. So, you know, credit to Indiana. Um, you know, after the game was over, I said I, I thought we got beat in all phases of the game. I should probably go back and correct it. I think the one bright spot of the game is we played well on special teams. You know, you, when you block a, ton for, a punt for a touchdown, when you uh, recover a, a kickoff return, fumble, pulse in, get two huge plays on special teams. Uh, I thought our kick coverage was good. I wish we could have kicked off a little bit more. But uh, the times we did kick, I thought we covered well. And um, you know, just looking back at the game, I mean, you know, we missed the field goals, which was disappointing because we'd been doing such a good job with that all year. But really, other, every other aspect of special teams, I thought we, we performed pretty well. So uh, again, I, I think good teams learn from losses. and. Um, you know, if we can learn from this, I think we'll benefit from it. And uh, I think the key this week was getting things cleaned up fundamentally, um, just having better attention to detail with some of those critical situations. And again, if you, you learn from it, I think it, it can end up helping you. If we don't, um, you know, our job is to make sure that those things don't repeat themselves. So looking forward to Murray State. Um, again, I, I coached a lot of years um, at the FCS <coughs> level. So I, I certainly have great respect for that level of football. Um, you know, we, this is the third year in a row that we've played an, an FCS team. I think the last two years, if you took FCS and cut it in half, we probably played two teams at, in the bottom half of FCS. I, I think this is a team that's in the, certainly in the upper half. They're two and one. Anytime you can score 83 points in a game, you're doing something right. Uh, they certainly gave Missouri a scare for the first part of that game. They had a great win last week. They have a head coach that really knows what he's doing with offense. You know, I, I've, uh, I used to do clinics with Chris Hatcher back in the uh, in the mid '90s and late '90s, and uh, you know, he, he's from the Hal Mummy tree, the air raid offense with Mike Leach, and I, I, he certainly knows what he's doing. Uh, they're very creative. Uh, they play at a fast tempo. He, he's not afraid to run trick plays anywhere on the field. And um, again, they're, they're a very well-coached team. So uh, they're talented. They have a bunch of transfers. The quarterback's an old Miss transfer. They have a running back who's an Ohio State transfer. They have a linebacker who's a Louisville transfer, another linebacker, UNLV transfer, a Kentucky transfer, a Memphis transfer, two South Carolina transfers, an Arkansas transfer, another UNLV transfer. So you know, these were, they have a bunch of players who were recruited to play at this level of football. And he's done a really good job of taking all these players and a bunch of JUCO players and, and building them into co a cohesive team. And, you know, Murray State's a program from the, uh, the OVC. 
know, this is where Mike Godfrey coached. This is where Frank Beamer was the head coach. Um, you know, Houston Nutt was the head coach there. That this is a, a good program, and he's done a good job of building them back. They move the ball on everybody, and they score points on everybody. So this is uh, will certainly be a challenge for our defense. And uh, offensively, we've got to find a way to get the ball in the end zone this week. So any questions? Will you talk a little bit about their defense? It looks like it is a lot of, you mentioned a lot of the transfers and stuff like that. Is there a cohesion in that unit yet, or has that been a struggle for them defensively? Or well, what's I mean, the struggle? Yeah, I mean, they, they've struggled on defense, but last week when they, uh, when they had to button it down and make stops, they did. And they've got some talented people. And, you know, I think that's usually a side of the ball that takes a little longer to come together. But they've got good players. I mean, the, the defensive end they have Sims, and he's got five sacks already. I mean, th there's certainly players that they're playing with that we would love to have at Bowling Green. And, and you see it. You see their talent level. Um, you know, their wide receiver is, is as good as anybody will probably face the rest of the year, Walter Powell. I mean, he is uh, he, he's a draftable NFL prospect. He could play for anybody. Um, but going back to their defense. They've got a, a tough system to get ready for. They do a bunch of different things. And, and that's certainly been a challenge this week with uh, our offensive line and some of the young tackles we have. There, there's some different funky looks that these guys throw at you. And uh, you know, we got to make sure that we get a hat and a hat and, and we're blocking the right people in pass protection in the run game and we don't cut people loose. And uh, they've got a good blitz package. Uh, they, they run some overloaded fronts that are different. Again, it, it, mentally, this will be a challenge for our guys just in terms of uh, how they line up because it, it is not a traditional defense. A lot of teams play you know, an over and under a stat. I mean, these guys are, are all over the map. And they're bringing strong safety blitzes, free safety blitzes, corner blitzes. And I think it's one of those defenses that's designed to get you off schedule, try to create turnovers, and, and get the ball back to their offense as fast as they can. Seems like these FCS updates are uh, upsets are happening more frequently these days. But why do you think that is, and why do you think it, it, it's not going to happen this week? <laughs> You're beautiful. <laughs> I appreciate. Do you, th you like do you think about these questions the night before? I'm not Natalie. Why it's not going to happen no, this I'm week? I'm looking yeah. for like a you know. <laughs> I, I, you know, I mean, my uh, and I've said this before. I mean, the, the last <laughs> team that I had at Richmond, you know, I mean, Tim Hightower, the starting tailback, started in the Super Bowl. Backup tailback Josh Vaughn is still playing in the uh, for the Atlanta Falcons in the NFL. Our corner Seth Williams is starting or playing for the Bills. Lawrence Sidbury is with the Colts. The, you know, if you get a football scholarship, you're a good football player. And, and I think sometimes uh, in one double A, depending on where you are, you know, you're the next round in recruiting. You know, I think in, in our footprint. You know, I'd love to tell you that we can go out and beat Ohio State, Michigan on a recruit. It doesn't happen. Okay, so a lot of times in, in our region, you know, we're battling for maybe the guys that the Big Ten didn't want. And you know, when, when I was in the one AA level, there were not a lot of there wasn't a big Conference USA or Sun Belt presence there. And I think where these guys are located, they get good players. The FCS level because a guy can leave a, an FBS school and be instantly eligible. I mean, some of these transfers, if, if they would have wanted to come here, uh, we would have been interested. But they don't want to sit out a year, and so that's a way to get a really high-level player. So um, again, it, it's good football, and uh, I have great respect for it because I coached at that level for a lot of years and, and certainly had great players, whether it was Brian Westbrook or, or whoever. They have good players, and uh, we're going to have to defend those guys. And you know, we, we have more scholarships. We have m hopefully more good players. And obviously, you, you schedule these games for the same reason that Mississippi State schedules us. But these things happen. And the MAC schools go on and beat BCS AQ teams, and FCS schools go on the road and, and beat uh, FBS schools. So I mean, th these guys are—they've got good players, and they're well coached. So comes down that we got to be well prepared and we have to execute our plan. And that way it's no different than a lot of games. Some players might think this is kind of like a self-paced game. Um, how do you prepare your players to be 
know, take it as serious as they would, say, at Indiana, Mississippi State, you know, that kind of level. You show them the film. You show our tackles number seven. You watch how quick he is off the ball and how he beats Missouri's offensive tackle and how he creates pressure in an SEC game. You put on the film and you watch number nine, Powell, that looks, he looks like Dre Archer. He's a legit four or five, um, and in their league, he, he is, I mean, people can't tackle him. I mean, he makes people look silly. He's a dangerous kick returner, punt returner, and he's a, an NFL prospect. I mean, that guy would come to Bowling Green, and he would start for us. So our players watch the film, and they know they're good players. And again, you've got to play well. There's certainly matchups that we have that should be favorable to us. So we, we've got to, uh, and, and that's coaching. I mean, we've got to, you know, the, the places that we have an advantage, we have to have those things, uh, you know, turn out to be the difference in the game. And, and you take a player like Powell, and, you know, if he ends up with 15 catches for 236 yards, it's going to be a long day for us. And, and he's capable of doing that. So our guys got to rise up to the challenge, and especially after last week, um, you know, that we played against a good quarterback and some good receivers, and we didn't handle it. This week we have a BCS quarterback that transferred from Old Miss, an NFL receiver, and, and we've got to rise up and meet that challenge. How do you feel your players handled the 24 hour rule? I mean, they handled it the way you wanted them to. I mean, they were really disappointed. I mean, we, we went in and, and we've played those games in the past. That, you know, maybe we play umbrella coverage, and try to keep things in front of us. I mean, we went in that game with the mindset that we were going to. You know, we were going in that game to, to win it. We were going to play our defense, and we felt good about our matchups, and they outplayed us, and they made more plays than we did. And some of those throws the Indiana quarterback made and some of those catches they made, we had good coverage. I mean, they, they played, Indiana played really, really well. Now, there's some things that we did to help them. I mean, we didn't defend the run well. We were a gap short and got cut off sometimes. But... You know, to me, when you, you lose a game, you fix the problems. You know, when, when you lose a game, it's not by accident. When you win a game, it's not by accident. And the reason we lost that game is we did not execute well enough. And then I took probably 30 clips of film and showed it to the whole team. You know, it was probably you know, 10 to 12 on offense, 10 to 12 on defense, you know, six to eight of special teams. And just said, you know, did we do – did we play up to our level? Did we execute at the level we're capable of? And no. And when you play a Big Ten team on the road, you better make those plays, whether it's you know getting the ball out on a fade ball on defense, or if you have a chance to, to win a one-on-one -on -one pass rush, winning it more than we want it. And on offense, if you've got the three technique and we're throwing the ball down the field, you've got to hold up your protection. And it's, those are certainly things that we're physically capable of doing. We didn't do it. So I don't care who you play. If you don't execute, you're going to be at risk. And that's where when you play good people, and in the end, Indiana, I mean, I, I sat here last week. I mean, that was the number two offense in the Big Ten last year. Nebraska was the number one offense, and Indiana was the number two offense. And they had nine starters returning. And they got a quarterback who, I mean, I think we helped them find the quarterback. You know, that guy's going to throw the ball for a lot of yards. And those wideouts are legit, man. They, they can play. And um, they had nine starters back from the number two offense in the Big Ten. It was a challenge for our defense, and we didn't rise up, and we didn't meet the challenge. So we go back to work this week, and we've got a, a different challenge this week. And we got to coach them up and get the assignments right and get the technique better and, and play better this week. How much did facing Indiana last week help this defense prepare for Murray State this week? I think it helped from the standpoint of their tempo. Murray's a team that likes to play fast, maybe not quite as fast as Indiana. Um, I think it certainly helped in terms of the matchup on the receiver. Murray's got some guys that can run and make plays, and we certainly faced that last week. Uh, after watching that film, I'm sure Murray's licking their chops, and they're excited about playing us. But I've got confidence in our guys. Uh, Cam Trust is a good player. He'll bounce back. Aaron Foster's a good player. He'll bounce back. I mean, we've got good players. Certainly didn't play perfect, but there's guys that I believe in, and, and you know these are seniors that they've been through it, and they know what they did and what they didn't do, and I'm confident. I mean, 
we had a, a great Tuesday practice last week or yet, yesterday. Really, you know, our corners practiced really well. Cam Trust probably had his best practice of the year, and, and that's the response you want. Didn't play well. Let's fix the problem and let's move on and not let it happen again. So How would you evaluate the running game after three games? I think it's better. Um, I mean, our, our rush numbers. You know, we're I don't know we're you know two or three in the league in rushing. Um, you know, to me, Indiana, we got a lot of cheap yards at the end. When we had to run the ball in the first half, we didn't. We were very uh, we, we were not balanced. And I think because we, we became one dimensional, I think that wore down our O line a little bit. And then we ran the ball late in the third quarter and the fourth quarter and got some cheap yards out of it, so it looked better than it really was. Um, but I, I like our old line. I think those young tackles are getting better. Jacob Bennett played really well on Saturday. Uh, he, he had a good game. And uh, I like our inside three guys, and, and Logan Dietz is going to be a good player too. So, you know, I, I'm, you know Fred Coppock got hurt, which is disappointing because um, I thought he really looked good in the end. He ran the ball hard. So it looked like he was ready to take that next step, but that's why we have eight tailbacks. So, and a lot of those guys can play. So again, it's getting better. It's not where we want it to be, but I, I certainly think it's uh, the last four years, every year, I think we've improved in the run game. And I, I expect to be an improved rush offense again this year. You know the next game is always the most important. Um, but you're kind of playing two seasons that are paralleling each other with you know, the early starts of the conference season. Why is it important for all three stages to have a good game Saturday to you know, get you back ready again for the next schedule? Yeah, I mean, I, football is a game of confidence. I mean, it's just, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, I think it'd be great to be a baseball coach. You know, you lose the first game and you have a double header and you play half an hour later and you get it out of your system. You know, if you lose that one, you got to, you know, you don't enjoy the wins as much either. But, I mean, football is an emotional game. I mean, you only get 12 opportunities. And so the way I look at it is we invest a month's worth of work in every game. And that's why when you lose a football game, the, the lows don't get lower. And when you win, the highs don't get higher. I mean, it's just you're up or you're down. And uh, certainly going into the, back into the conference schedule, uh, you know, you want your guys to have confidence. And again, I think, uh, you know, an early loss, if you're a good team, if you learn from it, can end up helping you. Um, and, and I expect our guys to bounce back. If, if we were a younger team, I think you worry a lot more about the effects of the last game. Um, you know, I don't worry as much. You know, when, when, in 10, when we played Michigan, and, and you know, we got beat pretty good, that, that had a disastrous effect on that team because that was such a young team. Um, I don't worry about that as much with this team. You know, this team, I think, has shown a resiliency to bounce back. and you know, Certainly, we showed that last year, and I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about that as much this year. Guys will do some things this week to challenge us. I mean, they'll run fake punts. You know, they'll run a fake punt in their own six yard line. They did it last year at a critical point in the game. I mean, they'll, you got to be fundamentally sound when you play these guys. So, you know, obviously we, we need to play better on offense and defense. And again, our, our special teams was solid last week. We got to keep that up. The guys are doing a good job on those units. You good? All right, thank you.